What's happening, everyone? I'm a pretty lucky guy. You know, I got the Hellcat. I got the Hellcat RDP. I got the Canic TPS 9SC. And I got three red dots. Now, this is the original Hellcat OSP. And I swapped the barrel from this one because I didn't like the safety, but I really wanted it. And my girlfriend likes guns with safety, so I figured I'd take this one that she could have that one. Now, I would love to say that I love everything about the RDP, but I don't, because I don't like this red dot. Check everything, it's all empty. Not sure if I'll actually be able to show you guys on camera. Maybe. A red dot right there. It's pretty bright in this room. I've got three lights on, plus there's still daylight outside. And this is the Hex Wasp. Now, I would like to think that the people who made this thought about what they were making. I'm not very convinced of that. And the reason is the light sensor. Let's try to get it to really focus in there for you guys. But it's right there. It's that little dot inside. I don't have the greatest camera, I'm sorry for that. But anyways, the point is, it's a very small light sensor. And it's not very good at picking up light. And as you guys hopefully can see on the screen here, the shroud right here casts a shadow onto that light sensor. Pretty much all times. Unless you've got direct light above it, it's not going to get very bright. Now, that's probably great for battery life, but it's pretty much unusable in pretty much every scenario except, like, outside at night. That's really, like, it's, it's like the equivalent of a night vision setting on other red dots, which I'm not really a fan of. Now, it is pretty low profile. It does have like a kind of co-witness groove going on there. It feels really nice. It looks really nice. The viewing window is pretty small, but I mean, it's a micro red dot. And if it had a better light sensor, and it didn't have that shadow cast on the light sensor at all times, I think it'd be pretty awesome. Unfortunately, they put it in a really dumb spot, and it's just not very bright. It's essentially unusable to me. Uh, it's easily my least favorite out of the three that I have here. So this is a Swamp Fox Sentinel. Just check, it's all empty. Like I said, I barrel swapped the RDP. And just... You guys can definitely tell on camera how much brighter this dot is. And that's probably because I used a much bigger sensor and didn't cover it in shadow. I also have uh, the iron side protector on it. It uh, probably doesn't need it. They claim a 50,000 round warranty, so it's essentially a lifetime warranty. Especially when ammo is like 90 cents a round right now. Not very many of us are shooting that much. Um... Uh, but it's got a bigger light sensor, a better placed light sensor, and Swamp Fox, when they made this, said that they kind of intentionally had it a setting higher than they realistically would have wanted, because it's better to be too bright than not bright enough. And I completely agree with that. Um, it's just the one complaint I have with both of these two red dots, uh, this is a write-on X3 MPRD, they're, uh, they have a slightly green tint to them, whereas the glass on the Hex Wasp is easily the best. Hands down, like, no questions asked, it's got the least discoloration. Um, but again, this is very usable, it's always on, it's got essentially the same battery life as this one, and... I think it's just much more usable. It's also less expensive, but, I mean, it's, 
it's a, it's less expensive when it's on sale or if you use codes. I personally use the code Daily Shooter off of the Daily Shooter YouTube channel. He's uh, got a little thing going on with them. So I paid, I think, $270-ish shipped for the Ironsides plus the Swamp Fox Sentinel auto adjust. You save like another 20 bucks if you go the manual adjust. Uh, like I said, I really like this red dot. It's great. It adjusts really fast. That was another thing I didn't mention with this one. This adjusts very slow to light changes. This one adjusts very quickly to light changes. And then your last option is something manual. So again, it's all empty. And this one stays on for 12 hours at your last brightness setting. Pretty sure I turned it all the way down because I knew I was going to be leaving for the weekend and I was leaving to get this gun behind. But... Well, let me go. Actually, I'm sorry. That's the downside. There we go. So... Hopefully we can get... It. There we go. So this... I mean, the best thing about manual is you can set it exactly how you want it. It'll probably burn through battery faster. But, you know, it's exactly as bright as you want it. As you can see, I hope you guys can probably see that kind of tinge, that color to it. Again, it's easily the worst of the three with the glass. I'd say this is the second best with the glass. This is easily the best with the glass. But it works in virtually every other way to me. Um, so, again, you can have this thing 100% manual. And you can have it low at night and set it. You can have this thing so bright that, uh, you know, it just kind of blooms and starbursts. And it's whatever you want. I'm really impressed with the Swamp Fox Sentinel in terms of light adjustment and having the right lighting setting. I never feel like it's just overly bright. I, it's usually just right. Um, so like I said, these two are really directly competing with each other with that battery life and that always-on capability. And to me, it's a no-brainer, go for this one. Because I've seen them down to $200 for the auto-adjust. I wouldn't pay $200 for this one. Is it nicer overall? If it wasn't for the light sensor, probably. But the light sensor is in such a bad spot, and it's so dim, I can't imagine using it outside during the daylight. Um, it just... You know, in the si sunlight, that thing's going to be awful. The right on's probably going to be the best because it's manual. Any manual red dot would probably be the best because you can bring the brightness all the way up. But like I said, I've been really impressed with how this one manages light. It adjusts really quickly. It gets really bright in bright areas. If it's in the dark areas, it gets pretty dim, and that's awesome. It does it quickly. So... To be honest, I wish I could have gotten... Once I knew in the store I didn't really like the red dot, but... The, uh, the RDP is so new. Like I said, I'm very lucky to have so many new toys. Um, you know, such a recent release. That I took it. Again, I didn't want the manual safety either, but it worked out, because now my girlfriend can carry this one with the manual safety. I'll carry without the safety, because that's how I prefer it. Uh... But if I could have gotten the RDP without the red dot and saved $250 or $300, it would have been a no-brainer, because it's just not a very good red dot with how bright it doesn't get. So, this is my gripes with the Hex Wasp. Um, in case you're wondering, the only real difference on the frames on this is the trigger. I personally like the Gen 1 trigger. But uh, if you've heard about the Hellcat trigger controversy before, where the trigger would kind of lock up if you didn't engage the trigger safety first, the, uh, it wasn't the industry standard. I don't think it was a defect, but a lot of people didn't like it. With Glock, with the other Springfields, with the M&P series, if you didn't initially press the trigger safety, and then... Uh, you just kind of, you did do it, but you didn't release it at all. You could kind of force the safety through. On this one originally, you could not do it. That thing was stopped. You were not going to end up firing that thing without releasing the pressure first. Strangely enough, the Canic is the exact same way. 
Uh, once you pull that trigger, if you didn't have the blade pushed in first, it's not going off. I don't care how hard you pull the trigger, it's not going off. Uh, Springfield held kind of an odd position and said that it's not a defect, it's not a safety thing. It's exactly how he intended and it's working. But ironically, on this one, again, this is the Gen 2 frame, uh, the RDP. Hopefully you guys can see that. They kind of angled the little safety switch there so that if you press it real hard, uh, like I said, I don't have the greatest phone. My phones aren't my biggest hobby. Clearly, I got some pretty expensive hobbies already. Um, if you press the trigger hard on this one after maybe not getting a good grip on the trigger initially, this one will go off. And that's, you know, depending what you like, it seems like the general consensus was that's the better setup. Um, again, the safety, which is a new option. You didn't have that option on the original Hellcat. Apparently there were a bunch of people saying, well, I would have bought it, but I really wanted the safety. So, congratulations, you're going to have a safety. There's also uh, the compensator on the RDPs. And this is how it's going to do its self-indexing. The barrel's actually got a notch there. You would just press the lever right here. Can't really do it great, but... If you just press the lever up, you do that, and then as you tighten it up, it'll lock into place. Or if you loosen it up, you have to press the lever again to do it. So it's not going anywhere. Press the lever. There you go. So that's just kind of a rundown of the RDP. It's very new, so I mean, good luck finding one. I, I saw it on my gun shop, uh, my local gun shop's webpage and was like, do you actually have it? in hand like it's, it physically exists and they were like yeah so showed up and that was that um but yeah the main point of this is i don't recommend the hex wasp um although other than the lighting effect maybe maybe my eyes just aren't as good as yours and maybe you will prefer it but it's my biggest complaint about it. it's my only complaint about the gun um now, they claim it's got a lifetime warranty. I haven't tried that yet. I can tell you. I did try the write-on with their warranty and their customer service. And within 12 hours, they had an RMA. They didn't ask me for a receipt, no proof of purchase, nothing like that, just like they said. And they said, just put the RMA in the box with the optic and send it back, and we'll have a new one out to you within two days. Uh, I haven't tried it with Swamp Fox. Now, keep in mind, there's actually nothing wrong with the right on I just wanted to test their words when they passed. Plan to try it with Swamp Fox. I plan to try it with Hex. So if that's something that interests you and you really want to know who's going to take care of their customers, check back in a few days and we'll see how those emails went. Anyways, have a great day. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it.